ensuring their protection is of utmost importance and the whole world is watching. We're also a home to various species of pinnipeds, including seals, and those populations are reportedly getting bigger in number, and we're getting more and more sightings from our local community, people in the community. Um, so uh, the major method of, of primarily prospecting for deep sea oil is seismic testing, and that um, the impacts of that is death, injury, stress, um, avoidance of their usual routes, and other behavioural changes. Um, it impacts on their feeding, their breeding, their nursing, their general socialisation, social behaviour. <coughs> um, here's a table you would have seen um, mapping the incidences of marine mammals in the area off the west coast. Um, the Waitakere Rangers Local Board has unanimously um, advocated for increased protection of Maui's dolphins. It's one of our um, work programs. We invest in, um, in educational material for our community and the like, and we're very happy to stand up with our community for the protection of Maui dolphins. This was just last year. Um, Saffron, we're just about yeah. ready to wind up. If you can sum up any last points you've got, please. Yeah, so um, the other last point about this is that um, obviously Maui's dolphins don't stick within local board boundaries or even council boundaries, so it's actually um, it's imperative to advocate for protection of Maui's dolphins beyond our borders because what happens in the areas beyond our borders impacts our own biodiversity. And finally, the climate change aspects will be very fast. IPP, IPCC says if we want to have no more than two degrees rise, then we've got to not drill any more. Paris Treaty hopes that we're going to keep rises below two degrees. But to do that, we have to keep exi uh, some existing discovered oil in the ground, and we can't discover any more. And Bill McKibben said, one lesson of this work is unmistakable of this. When you're in a hole, stop digging. These numbers show that the unconventional and extreme fossil fuel Canada's tar sands, for instance, simply have to stay in the ground. Given these numbers, it makes literally no sense for the industry to go hunting for more fossil fuel. We've binged to the edge of our own destruction. The last thing we need to do now is find a few more liquor stores to loot. And we urge Council to oppose drilling. Thank you very much. Uh, can I just ask if there are any questions from councillors? We will be having a fuller discussion on this shortly. If not, thank you very much to the Waitakere Rangers Local Board and its chair. And I have a formal recommendation of thanks when it comes up on my screen. Um, uh, I move that the governing body receive the presentations from Angela Dalton, Chair Manarewa Local Board, Julia Parfit, Chair Hibiscus and Bays Local Board, Greg Preslin, Chair Waitakere Rangers Local Board, Paul Walden, Chair Waiheke Local Board, and Lydia Sassini, Chair Mangari Otahuhu Local Board, regarding the governing, board, the governing body and local boards working together, and from Greg Presland, uh, Chair of the Waitakere Rangers Local Board, and the accompanying Waitakere Local Board members, regarding Item 10, Approval of Block Offer 2017 Council Submission, and also thank all of the local board chairs in attendance today. Do I have a seconder I'll second for it. that? It's been seconded. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 To the contrary, no. Carried. Thank you very much for your presentation. Now, we will get through the next two items on the agenda uh, very quickly. Extraordinary business. There has been none notified and notices of motion, uh, there have been none <coughs> notified there either. So we come to agenda uh, number 10, which is the item that the Waitakere Local Board, uh, Ranger, Lo Waitakere Rangers Local Board has just been speaking to the approval of block offer, uh, 2017 council submission. Um, can I advise that in the <coughs> documents that you have from the Waitakere Rangers Local Board, there have been two minor amendments made in the input to paras 9 and 12 and the revised document will form part of the minutes. Um, can I also, uh, just before calling on our officials to speak to the submission, 
move recommendations A to D, and you'll notice that uh, from the chair I've added D, which is include in the final submission the statement that Auckland Council seeks the government's assurance that in the event of an oil discharge or spill, adequate emergency response systems are in place and that the polluter responsible will bear the entire financial liability for the incident, including any and all costs associated with environmental mitigation. So that is now part of the substantive motion. Uh, so if I can just uh, formally move that and ask for a seconder for that. Seconded. Seconded. And I'll call on uh, now Dave Allen, pro uh, Principal Analyst, and Paula Vincent, Coastal Specialist, to uh, present on this uh, particular report. And then we will have a debate. And uh, there is a, uh, a, a foreshadowed uh, amendment to the recommendations in the name of Cathy Casey. So I'll ask Cathy to lead off after we've had questions. Yes, so Dave or Paula? Uh, Your Worship, thank you. Uh, governing body, thank you very much for the opportunity to um, provide an overview on the Block Offer 2017 proposed council submission. Um, so I've got um, Paula Vincent here with me, and she'll be able to give you a bit of an overview of the presentation, and we'll be able to answer some questions after that. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Good morning, governing body. So we're here this morning to seek your approval of a proposed submission. Um, from Auckland Council to Central Government on the Block Offer 2017 um, proposals. Block Offer 2017 is similar to um, Block Offers in previous years where New Zealand um, Petroleum and Minerals um, release for tender certain blocks for exploratory oil activities. Um, they consult with local government and Iwi and Hapu over these areas before releasing them for the tendering process and the consultation period for local authorities this year has been from the 17th of October to the 18th of November. So this has coincided a little bit with the um, re-establishment of council, so we have not um, circulated to local boards and as we have done in previous years our proposed submission, but we have received from Waitakere local board their input. So overall the areas in the proposal are similar in size and location to previous years. There's no direct overlap with Auckland's coastal marine area. There is overlap with the marine mammal sanctuary of the west coast North Island down in the Taranaki and Waikato coastal marine areas. And we're proposing to submit um, our submission with similar points that we have covered in previous years. So just um, <coughs> the diagram on screen now is the areas the blocks up for offer and the blue areas within it are the areas that have already been granted exploratory permits. So there are four main issues that we cover in our submission or areas of concern and that is the effect on climate change, <coughs> uh, the effects on Maui's dolphin, the other environmental risks associated with exploratory activities including oil spills, and the integration with council RMA processes. So with regards to the effects on climate change, as you've heard from earlier public submissions, Auckland Council has signed up um, to the pa Paris Agreement, C40 and Compact of Mayors, and has a target in the Auckland plan seeking to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by 2040. So Auckland Council has already made a decision as to um, what direction it wants to take in that and so we feel that it would be um, consistent to oppose that. The effects on Maui's dolphins, the Maui's dolphin largely ranges outside um, on Auckland's west coast, so between the Manukau Harbour and further south in the Waikato but it does go all the way down to Taranaki and we're concerned that any exploratory activity that takes place within the marine mammal sanctuary may have an adverse impact on the remaining numbers. There's only 63 left. There are also other impacts um, from oil exploratory activities apart from the um, major oil spill that may occur through exploratory drilling. There's also discharge of um, the 
material that's been drilled up, including any chemicals with that, that may spread further. And when it comes to the integration with the council RMA processes, these areas up for um, permit can be right on the border between the EUZ and the RMA. Um, so they may wish in future, having been granted a permit for that area to explore further into the RMA. And so we'd seek to um, have what our unitary plan provisions are considered when they're making a decision to issue a permit. So there's three actions that we're seeking in this submission. To amend those areas in 17 TAR R1 and R3, which overlap with the Marine Mammal Sanctuary, and that's in the Waikato and Taranaki coastal marine areas. That New Zealand Petroleum and Minerals take a very high standard when they consider applicants for those permits and um, favour those with the best environmental track records to minimise any risk of oil spill and discharge and that they actively support the integration of environmental management tools, including considering our unitary plan and RMA provisions. That's just a map of the overlap of um, the Marine Mammal Sanctuary on the right there and the areas proposed for offer this year. Perhaps I could just add one or two other observations, and that is that um, attachment B in your papers um, outlined some of the statutory considerations and processes. And I think it's important because it's, uh, it sort of sets the scene for how these sorts of um, investigations are, con are conducted um, and assessed. A lot of the environmental effects assessment is done under either the RMA in the case of anything uh, within the coastal marine area, but obviously the um, uh, Environmental Protection Agency takes a role um, under their regulations they administer for areas outside of the 12 nautical mile area. So there's a number of tests um, that um, anyone who was successful in a block off a tender process would have to then subsequently meet uh, before they were able to carry out um, the exploratory activities. And I would also just um, mention that this is about exploratory permits, which differs from mining permits, which is a third stage. There's um, also one stage along the track beyond prospecting permits, the exploratory sits in the middle. So um, it does allow for um, some level of investigations um, and also some, some drilling, um, exploratory drilling. And um, in, sort of in terms of what's actually happened aco across this bit of the coast, uh, probably the nearest uh, exploratory drilling has occurred sort of halfway between uh, Raglan and Port Waikato, about 24 nautical miles offshore. So, and that was about 2010, I think we've seen about two exploratory wells that have been drilled. So the level of activity is not high, um, but um, the, um, the uh, assessment is that basically uh, we would like to avoid the risks associated with any of these practices and we would want those risks assessed appropriately through this tender process initially but also through the environmental effects tests that come subsequently. So that's just the observation. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, yes, Kathy Casey. Um, I've got three questions, uh, Dave. The first one is, um, it seems to me, this is just my personal opinion, but the report or the submission, there's a lot of, um, if you're weighing it up, on the one hand, we've got paragraph 14, exploration and production of these resources has potential to bring economic benefits to Auckland, one sentence, and we've got four levels of concern and whole paragraphs ahead of them. My question to you is, what does paragraph 14 mean? Exploration and production of these resources has potential to bring economic benefits to Auckland, because that's the reason we're doing this, according to you, right? Uh, so the reason we're putting the submission through council is to obviously identify what we think is the um, risks as well as potential benefits of this kind of activity. Um, I think that was simply just to recognise that this is one element that you would want, as a council, you would want to consider. Um, and then the question would be, what is the scale of those particular benefits and what are you, what are you considering in terms of the risks associated or, or you know, in comparison to those uh, particular benefits? Um, but I think more generally, um, this is something that central government should be, you know, 
perhaps articulating a bit further, that would be one of the other thing to consider as to what some of the opportunity might be here and some of the trade-offs that they might have gone through to sort of put this tendering process out. No, 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 I'm not accepting that. We've just been through some training that says that we need to have evidence presented before us before we make a decision. So there's evidence here, there's lots of concerns, lots of risks, but you're saying there are some benefits to Auckland, so tell me what they are. You tell me what they are. It's your report, your so submission. So basically the benefits that are associated with the, um, the employment opportunities, the infrastructure, the servicing of um, vessels that might come into port. Um, so there's a number of uh, services associated with supporting the industry, similar to what you might have experienced in, say, Taranaki, where there's quite a lot of investment uh, associated with this particular industry. So 